Alright guys, thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to go to Windy City Wire and um, we're going to make a new series out of this probably uh, where we go around and go to vendors, you know, uh, offices or warehouses and kind of take an inside tour and show you what the company's all about. Uh, we have a couple of these, uh, these ideas and uh, that are in the works with some other vendors. so. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that content. But right now we're on our way to Windy City Wire. And we're about another 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes out. And uh, we're gonna talk to Juan, he's the warehouse manager. So that's where we're headed. Okay, so we arrived at Windy City here. It's, uh, we're in Houston, Texas. This is our, our local um, place that we pick up wire. They also, I think they're headquartered in uh, in Chicago, I'll find out that here in a little bit. But the reason why I say that is we got invited, um, they sent all their vendors a couple years back this invite to go watch Toby Keith play live in Chicago on, I think it was like the Navy, the Navy Pier or something they call it like that. Uh, so me and my wife went down there, we flew down to Chicago to watch Toby Keith play for free on the pier, free food and everything. And it was all courtesy of uh, Windy City Wire. So. After that, I was really impressed with, with Windy City Wire, and I was like, well, let's try to give them more business. So um, we do business with a couple other suppliers on wire, but for the most part, this is where we go, with Windy City Wire. Because they also integrate, the, the technology of their boxes integrate with, uh, with dollies and, um, and things like that, and carts and stuff. They have it where the boxes all integrate, and you can pull wire easily, which we'll try to show you that too. Um, so let's go talk to Juan and find out some more about Windy City Wire. So this is uh, so this is their ware warehouse area. So you see, there's their will call door right there, and this is where they uh, they pull up the wire. I'm assuming and unload their stuff. We'll find out right now. But that's the will call door. So let's head on over there. All right, guys. So we're in the back of the will call area here with Juan Herrera. Yep. Nice to uh, meet you, sir. Um, so what, just tell us a little bit about your job here. What do you what do you do? What's your position? Things okay, like that. So I am the warehouse manager for the Houston location for Windy City Wire. Um, other than that, I help around the company, uh, going to different locations, helping them a little bit uh, on day to day operations. I help uh, train some of the managers and set up some of the locations. Uh, that's us to my day to day operations. But pretty much, yeah, I just run this warehouse right here. Okay. And uh, I know you said you went to other locations. They yes. send you around to other places, so you kind of help other places get set up? Yes, a little bit, yes. Awesome. How many, um, do you know how many warehouses you have? Yes, we have a total of 19 warehouses right wow. now open throughout the United States, yes. That's why you have wire every time I need it, That's right? right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. How long have you been with uh, Windy City? I've been with the company for a little bit over 15 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's how long I've been in this industry, actually. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's good. So did you, what did you, did you start off in a more entry position or? Oh, well, I actually started it as a, just as a regular guy in the warehouse, uh, pulling wire. Okay. And uh, little by little, I made my way through. Uh, then I became an assistant manager in another location, actually in, in Florida. Okay. And then I was given the opportunity to open my own branch. And uh, that's when I moved to Houston. Nice, nice, okay. Awesome, so you moved your way up. Um, What's, um, I guess we'll ask some generic questions here for you. So what's the uh, what's the largest order you've ever seen in here? Anything crazy? Yes, actually, uh, throughout my, my my traveling with the company, mm -hmm. um, I was once took over to a Denver airport, which is a very well-known airport. Right, I've been there. For a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and um, as, as I was going to mention, uh, the company is all about the customers, so they always like to, when it's big orders, they like to go beyond what we normally companies normally right. do. Mm -hmm. So they have me and the uh, manager for operations for the entire company go up there to check on a huge order, mm -hmm. uh, job that we're doing in the airport. And uh, other than seeing the airport and like all the inners of the airport, right. um, we got to see, well, I, I got to see more than a container worth of wire sitting there. And actually uh, we have to go through and make sure it was done to the specifications of the job. Mm -hmm. So like a whole shipping container? A whole shipping container 
full of wire from top to bottom. Just for the airport? Just for the airport. Yeah, I mean, there's miles of this cable yeah, running I, I through buildings. Know, I don't know how much money was involved, but I know it was millions of feet of wire. Gotcha, millions of feet. Cool, all right. Well, um, what's the, uh, I guess, what's the most challenging thing of, uh, what's the most challenging thing you have to deal with here, and what's the most rewarding thing also? I guess both of them will be summarizing one thing, which is the same, and it's the same thing we're talking about trying to always go about and beyond the expectations of a mm -hmm. customer. To me, it's challenging because you always want to do more and more. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's the most rewarding because like when people don't expect something and they get it, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, you see those faces and you see those things they do and sometimes they even send emails about it. Yep. And it's just very rewarding for me. Good, good, good. And now we got you on the video, see? That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, one more thing for here. What do customers say is their favorite thing? At Windy City Wire, what 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 do you think the customers like the most about your company? I mean, other than customer service, mm -hmm. which uh, we're always known for that, um, I will say these are our rack pack systems and our device managing managing systems. Mm -hmm. Those are the main thing, uh, bread and butter of our, of our company right now. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that come here and say that they used to buy wire from some other company, and then the one time they didn't have it, they came to us, and ever since then. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. They never know about so yeah. I, I hear that quite a lot. So I will say that that will be the one thing that I that I found that gotcha. people like a lot. Yeah. Well, what I like the most is is that you can put our logo on the box and our information. The stuff that you can put on the box, the way that the box is designed yep. to work with your, your rack. It's called rack pack system. Yes, rack pack system. The way it works. In the, the rack pack system is like there's multiple different dollies and, and carts and things that are made to make your life easier on the job. Which we'll show you that at the, near the end is a showroom for that. So. All right. Well, um, thanks for spending some time answering sure. some questions. Now let's uh, let's go walk through the warehouse. Sounds good. Okay, so we're in the spooling area, uh, and this is where they they put wire to certain lengths on reels. So I'm gonna let Juan go ahead and show us how this whole operation works here. And I'm gonna step a little bit out of the way. Go ahead. Okay, so this is a cutting machine. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna locate the reel we're looking to cut or spool. I'm gonna get it through the counter. So it start counting. And uh, I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna make sure it starts on zero. So that our footage is accurate. And I'm gonna pull on it. I already have a new reel set up in place, which is the one we're gonna use for the new length that we're gonna cut out of the reel. And um, yeah. I'm gonna show you really quick how it, how it gets done. Um, sometimes it's simple, sometimes it's not. Uh, it all depends on the person. <laughs> first training. <laughs> so, first thing I'm gonna do is okay. I'm gonna set it up on the spool and right. I'm gonna roll on it a couple of times so that so it gets secure in place. Right, and it's counting right here. Yeah, the it's feet already counting. As you do it. Because it's already going through. Gotcha. Uh, safety first. So Got it. Get you got the glasses. All right. You don't want to grab the wire straight, so you want to grab one of the racks that we have in here. Okay. So you don't need to put any strain on it. Pretty much just to hold it and guide it back and forward. Okay. Uh, what yeah. I can do is I show you a couple of seconds first on how it gets done. And then, sure, uh, if you want to. Go ahead. You can stay there. Oh, okay. I can do it from here. Go ahead. Safety first. Another thing that is important about a wire is every wire that we cut, every wire that we re-spool mm -hmm. is also use Glide, which is our patent actually Glide and a loop system. Mm -hmm. It's a dry loop, so it doesn't have to be wet. It just has to be on the jacket and it lasts for months. Oh, and okay. it's gonna help with your pulls. So I scoop a couple of times in the, in the rack and then I'm gonna stand on it. It's on zero right now and I'm gonna slowly start moving. Speed it up. Yep. Okay. So, and all I'm gonna do is guide it back and forward. I'm oh, this way, I see. And that's it, and then okay. as, I, as I do it, I, can, I look at the counter and see it when I'm close, to the and footage. I stop, and I gotcha. just double check our, our footage, and then I cut it where I need it. Okay, so okay. hold this here. There's a pedal. Yep. And the Make speed's sure good, or when we turn it down? Zero, so you start from zero. All right. And then you start speeding as you feel this comfortable. All right, so pedal down and then turn. Ooh, that goes fast. All right. And do I need? That's it. Oop. Doesn't have to be perfect because of the way it's set up. It will never lap over each other, so it will always be a perfect pull. Oh wow. 
All right, how much feet do you want me to pull here? Oh, that should be fine. As, you know, as so as 75 feet. <laughs> All right. you, can go, yeah. you can keep going, you know, sometimes they need 500, sometimes they need 750s. Right. You can do whatever, you know, whatever you need. And so, then cut it. There's our 75 foot section. We just cut it here? Yep. If okay. you need our 75. But for now, let's leave, leave it. Like that. We're not going to cut We're it. We're going to cut now. it. Okay. But just for training purposes. So. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. And we'll this give... is our cutting location, so. So you cut it and then that's good to go. It's yep. measured to the size. Yep. Okay. I can take these off now? Yep. All right. Good to go. All right. What's next then? Um, that's up to you. We can go around the warehouse. Yeah. Um, so this is where you cut down to the size you need. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm assuming this is where they bring the, the wire yeah, in. The material comes in through the bay doors. Okay. Uh, once it's here, uh, it all depends if it came in a transfer from our main factory. Okay. Then we'll sort it out and then put it on our racks. And then it just gets ready, you know, so we can start pulling our orders. Okay. Well, let's take a, well, what we'll do is we'll take a walk through the aisles and kind of look at everything. I knew you had some other stuff besides yeah. wire. So let's take a look at that too. That works. Yeah. Okay, let's go. All right. So this is our access control wire, uh, mm -hmm. which is used for automation uh, and access control, of course. We have it on different colors mm -hmm. and sometimes in even different set settings, depending on what you need. We can actually make it to expectations to what you need. So uh, just real quick, so these are here are all, this is known as banana wire yeah, in the one, industry. Yeah, it's just the same thing, but, but in different, different colors. colors. Any different uh, mixes of wire or same? Well, right now, these are probably all the same, but okay. if you need them on a different, uh, you know, setup, we can we can get it done for you. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, as you know, we're a manufacturer, so we manufacture our own wire um, right. for, the most, for the most part. Okay. Uh, so all these are underground wire, wire lighting and stuff like that. Direct burial? Uh, like, yeah, all, all direct burial. Um, we keep it on this area. Yeah. And then uh, we have some communication wire right on top and some of the low voltage 22.2, 22.4, 22.6, shielded and unshielded, all in different colors. Most in the thousand foot? Yes, mo most of the stuff we sell is in thousand footers. As you see, we have the right. cutting machine so we can always bring it down to whatever it is that customer gotcha. needs. Yeah, usually we'll have you cut it in two 500 or yes, something like that for us. Yes, most of the time is 500, you know, so they can do multiple pulls at the same time. Okay. Uh, other than that, we still have some of the 25 pair, uh, you know, still cat okay, wire. Right. And uh, some of the CCTV wire, like coax. Uh, RG59? We use RG59, RG6, okay. uh, RG quad as well. Um, okay. We don't keep much of it in stock because it's kind of going out of style. Yeah, right, least, but right. We still keep some for like old jobs that need to be fixed. For sure, for sure. Uh, we also carry, uh, we have a partner company that is called Garvin. And uh, they they care for all the J hooks, uh, brackets, uh, all the all the little things that you're gonna need for installations. We also uh, carry those things. Uh, yeah. We don't have them in here, but we also have face plays. Uh, we have patch cords. Okay. Yeah, even tape. So anything that you need for a job, mm -hmm. um, we can get it for you and get it all ready for you. You mean tape as in like different colored yes. tape to label? Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, these are a lot of these things we use in the field for running wire, you know, your J hooks and your little your bridal rings, rings, bridal rings and things like that. And the brackets. And the brand is Garvin, right? Yes. Garvin? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. What do we got next in the next aisle? Okay, so this is, you said the rack packing, rack packing area. area yes. And you got wire in our color, ready to go, Guardian Orange. Okay. If anybody needs wire in Guardian Orange, they have it. So here it is. So I figure I explain our system a little bit more in depth. Uh, so this is our rack pack. This is our packing boxes that we use for the wire. And I'm gonna explain to you the construction and, and the reason we do it. So first we're gonna close one of the sides of the box. I'm gonna use one of our ends, which are called end caps. This is what holds the wire together. And as you see, they're very steady, so they're gonna last. And make sure they don't break in the process. Then our wire is gonna be loaded in the box the correct way, because we want that wire to always spool from the bottom of the case. That way you'll never rip the case and you will always have a, a nice pull. Right. It goes in and we tap it off with another end cap. We close. Here. 
pocket. When we do this, we make sure we don't go over the rip away. Uh, and we check again the wire to make sure it's rolling correctly in the box. Then we mark it and with that we complete the rack pack process. Okay. Yeah, we, we appreciate the way you pack the boxes because some other suppliers we buy them from, like I say, you pull on the wire and it starts pulling in and ripping into the box. You yep. grab the box, they tear, the handles tear. Before you know it, you got a whole room full of torn boxes. So, um, so that's our pride. Awesome. Right there. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and I just wanted to point this out too because this is what you're going to show us later, right? Yes. So we're going to go in the front room and take take a look at these here in a little bit, but these are all the. Uh, Go ahead, I'll let you describe Those it. Those are the wire, wire management devices that we use. Uh, they're all set up for a wire and for our boxes. And that way it allows you to do easy multiple pulls or single pulls. And, uh, and that way it will lower the uh, labor on the job. All right. Okay, what's next? Okay, so this aisle will be, we, we consider our main aisle, mm -hmm. the one we pull the most. And it consists of one side is all fire wire. Mm -hmm. So all fire alarm, sprinkle system wire. The other side will be all security and communications as well as sound. So it's all, you know, it's all our main art. This is like the bread and butter of our system. Right. 18 gauge, 16 18 gauge, 14. 16. Yep. That's it. See it. All okay. the way down to 12 gauge and all the way up to 22 gauge. Okay. In both fire and, and communication. All right. And I noticed, I noticed all the labels in here, yes. which we'll get to in a little bit. That I noticed the different colors. Yep. <laughs> and so now we're going to go through the process of getting an order ready. So if you hear in the background that beep that is annoying you, that is exactly doing what it's supposed to. That's telling us there is an order ready for us to pull. So somebody will come here, either me or one of the guys in the team, and we go through the order. The first thing we do is uh, we check for things that we need to do extra, for things that they want, specific things. All that will be consigning here as notes. Mm. So sometimes will be cuts, sometimes will be a specific way they want it cheap. But all those things we're gonna highlight. If no, we're just gonna highlight the way it's gonna go. In gotcha. this case, this is a will call, which means they can come up at any minute and pick it up. So we wanna get this ready as quickly as we can. So gotcha. the next thing we do is we're gonna grab our scanner. Okay. And we start the process by scanning our ticket. This system is also made so that we cannot make mistakes as we pull the orders. Nice. So we're gonna go ahead and start pulling the orders. Our whole warehouse is set up as alphanumerical. So I'm gonna look at the location. I'm gonna look at what they need and I'm gonna see what device I need to pull. If it is a big order, I probably gonna need a big car. If it's a small order like this one, I just need a small car. So I just wanna grab this car right here. Okay. And we're gonna pull this order really quick. All right, I'll follow you. So this order is located on EO9B. This is the E dial, this is the nine location, and B will be the second shelf for us. Okay. So, I'm gonna check to make sure it's the right items that I need. We also go by dates. All our material is dated, so that we always pull the oldest material, and the customer never mm. get left with like old material. Uh, once the material gets too old, it actually gets cracked. Well, uh... We don't sell old material. <laughs> so, I need 3,000 feet, and since I know each box is 1,000 feet, I'm gonna pull my three boxes. All right. I'm gonna make sure that item is pulled forward for the next person that has to pull it. And then I'm gonna scan my boxes. It's gonna tell me when it scans and it goes through. The, the scanner is actually scanning it into my name because the gun is on my name. So mm. after that, I'm gonna move it to a chipping location because this order is ready to chip. After okay. that, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and print my packing slip for the order and get it ready to get sent through the through the printing machine. Okay. So I'm gonna come back to my computer and I'm gonna print my packing slip. Put the ticket number. Ticket number. When the order is pulled correctly, I'm going to see a green line, meaning that it was picked, picked correctly 100%. And I'm going to print my packing slip. Okay. Then I go back to my productivity. It's back in here for one of my guys. Okay. Once I have my packing slip, I get it ready. Since this is a wheel call, I know. It's gonna stay here until it gets picked up. 
Mm. In our process, everything goes into a clipboard. Get my gun back. Oh, actually, one more step. I'm gonna print. Since I noticed that those labels have a stripe on it that is not supposed to be on it, I'm gonna reprint those Exxon labels so that they show what the actual material is. Okay. And uh, that's, the, the, that's the whole process of pulling an order. All right. It goes from the time it comes out of the machine to the time I print a second paper out of the machine, which is the packing slip. Gotcha. Yeah, that's all your labels pulling that right yep. there. These are Exxon labels, which will replace the ones that are already on the on the box. Okay. I will show you why in a second. I'm going to replace them because the one from these boxes actually came with a green stripe. Right. And then when I check the material, the material show it doesn't have a green stripe. It's just white. Uh, so this is only on there to say that there would have been a stripe on the wire. Right. Gotcha. Okay. And so it was mis probably a mistake called the machine error. Uh, so. Once again, I'm going to match them all to their actual label. And the only one I'm actually replacing is the one side that's not right. Right. I also... So that's another service you offer is to put a line on it so you can tell yes. what, oh, this is my, my power wire, this is my video, that's or whatever. Right. That's okay. actually one of the, the reasons we were found that one of the things that started at the company, they wanted to show um, have more things for the for the automation, people, right. you know, for the low voltage guys out there, and um, that's actually one of the reasons our founder started the, the company. He started by putting the uh, print legend on the wire, something that a lot of the companies didn't do at the time. Right. He started offering a lot bigger variety of colors as well mm -hmm. as stripes. So that's a little bit of the history of the company. And then we check the direction, the, we make sure the direction of the boxes is correct. The right. wire is pulling from the right place. And then they're ready to go into our machine. To the label, uh, the label maker, right? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, um, do you have something where we can show them on your wire? The you know, that says the footage. Yes. I okay. remember seeing that. So let me actually show you out of one of these boxes. Okay. You know what? Let me show it out of one of our own boxes. No problem. So that's a thousand. What is it? How many yeah, feet? It starts in. It starts oh, in zero, but it will show you that the one box have a thousand, and that the counter starts on zero. So it will be zero to a thousand, and then when we get to the other side, it should be the opposite. Zero in one end and thousand on the other end. So you can count it always from either side of the box. So if I was pulling this in the middle and it said um, it 500. said 500, and this would say that would be 500, 500 also, and you yes. know you're at half, yes. halfway more. So once you go past that, you're going to be, the second number will tell you exactly how many feet are in there. So if, for, for instance, you use already 600, mm -hmm. then it should be 400 and 600 and so on and so on until you got you the same number again on the other side. That way when you're pulling the wire, you can be like, you can grab a box that's already been used, and before you're going out in the field, you can say, oh, this one's only got 40 feet. Right. Oh, this one's got 200 feet, grab that one. You know, or this one's a small project, we're just running it from here to there, grab that 40 foot box. So that helps us a lot, we use that all the time. Okay, so this is an order ready to go out, you said? Order ready to go out, it's already been checked, it's already been um, organized, you just need to get printed. With okay. the company logo. All right, I guess let's take a look at that. All right, so let's start with the small one that we just pulled. Uh, so to finish this process, so we load them up to the machine. And then we start the printer. Okay. So. The barcodes in the front of the box, that's what we're going to use right now. They're already attached to the order, so they already have the customer information. If you turn around with the camera, you're going to see the customer information, once I scan it, is going to appear for us to check. On that screen? Yep. Yep, there. To make sure everything is correct before we send it through. So this, this company doesn't actually have a logo with us. Okay. So it will get the generic logo for the company and then their name and all the information. So they still get all the information they need. Okay. We just load it to the conveyor belt. See you go. Prints. Then you'll be live. That's going to dry it instantly. Mm. And it's done. Let's take a look at that label. Hey, go ahead and watch the process. So there is a small cases where the, the, the arco is not going to print because for some reason it was wrong. 
that's what I use the ones that I printed earlier. Gotcha. And I just change them and send them through. Okay. That's empty. <laughs> I guess that will also work if you want a tattoo. Yeah, I was wondering, I'm like, man, that's not even, it's not a sticker, it's actually inked on there. Yeah. That's crazy how it does that. Special UV light rated ink. They, it dries instantly once it hits the sunlight. Right. So if you get any of this ink on your body and you run into the sun, you actually get a semi-permanent uh, oh, tattoo no. on your body for a little while. <laughs> Man, don't want to put it on your hand, the logo. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was a small order. Now we can... It would be the same thing, the same process to send this one through. Okay. It was already checked, so... All right, I'll back out of the view and let you get some of the machine doing what it does and whatever he does. So on a busy day, all our orders get shaped on these cars. Mm -hmm. They get full on these cars and then they, you'll see a little back type of orders over here. And then somebody will be here doing exactly what I'm about to do. Which is just getting them on the printer and sending them through. Very nice. When they come on the other side, I'm gonna mm -hmm. check for accuracy, make sure the labels are good. And make sure all the information is readable. Right. Tells you eight of 13 boxes. Perfect. It will tell you all the information, Order. the PO number, the job name, uh, the, the date of the box. So like the wiring there, we still have an expiration right. date because of the glide that we oh, use. Oh, right, right, okay. So once that day is fired, we can either get it back to get re-glide mm -hmm. if it's still like recent, right. or we can just get it, you know, at okay. that time, it gets toast if we, if we don't get rid of it. And I like the fact so you can put a PO on there. So if we have a big job, we can be like, oh, that's for, you know, the park job. Put park whatever on it and also, then they'll label an, it. Another good thing about it is the numbers in the bottom will reflect the jacket. So if it's white, the jacket will be oh, white. Okay. If it has a stripe in the middle, as, as we saw the ones before, the jacket actually will have the same color stripe on the, on the jacket. Gotcha. Okay. Also, on the end, it will be two conductors shielded. If it doesn't have the S, it will be non-shielded. So when you're in a rush in the job, you just look at the boxes, which one I need. Do I need shielded or shielded? By just looking at the box, you know exactly what you need to grab in the awesome. pipe. Okay. Pretty good. That, that probably should be for this end as well. Unless there is anything else you need to see on this end. Other, that, if that's it, yeah. Other than packing them, that's pretty much it. So now we're going to take a look at those cool dollies and those, yes. uh, yeah. ra what they call rack... Uh, the rack stack, there is a couple of different ones, but they're just uh, wire management uh, devices. Okay. Uh, there's different names. One is a rust stack, the other one is a rack track, and uh, you know, we got a couple okay. of them. All right, yeah, let's go check that out then. Sure. So these are all our uh, wire management devices uh, that we carry right now. Uh, they're used on the job site to make your life easier, to make multiple poles or single poles, however you need it. Uh, some of them are designed for on the go, so if you just need to do a quick job, only a couple of boxes, you grab your uh, one box, load it up and go. Or if you need to do a longer job or multiple pulls, you can just grab one of our devices mm -hmm. that are perfect for that. Uh, and then they come in all sizes and uh, colors. <laughs> yeah, we have we have uh, one of these models. It's an older model, but um, can you show them how, how the holes through the boxes work and where you pull the wire, how it makes it easier for you? Yes, definitely. So, uh, let's, let's go with this one in particular. So you can load multiple layers of wire and then you can use it and pull multiple uh, lines at the same time. So you, let's say that I need to pull one of the lines from this one, and then I need to pull one of the lines from this one, and then I need to pull one of the lines from this one. So I can grab and move, bundle them in here, set it up aside, get them on the pipe, start making my pull, this is going to reduce the labor because you don't need multiple people doing it, you just need one person. 
Right. And you're gonna know because of the uh, of the boxes, they're always gonna be a perfect pull. Yeah, because they have the the rail that goes through them all right here, so they're not falling off. Uh, and the way of the car is you're just gonna keep them steady. You can also lock the wheels. Lock the wheels, so like it's not gonna move. It's not gonna go anywhere. Nice. Now, if you have a vertical pull and you need more, you can also get them through. They're all designed with like pull apart from top and on the bottom, so you can pull them all through. It even says push and in for yeah, vertical yeah. pulling. Okay. And that's it, and just get them all out. Just put mm -hmm. the car right under the, uh, under the pulls and then just go. Okay, so you can pull out front. Sorry, just real quick. You can pull out the front or you can pull all the way up through. Yes. That's how it works. Right. Okay, perfect. Next one would be like for a smaller job. You can just, you know, grab it and, and on the go, just get going. Okay. Setting it up is easy. All you need to do is pretty much lay it down. Actually, I set it up wrong. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to come on top. You, you, you know, sit it on top, get the rub through, mm -hmm. secure it, and you're ready to go. Okay. And these are all your own designs, right? These, these are, are all company designs, yes. That's it. And then this one here, I hadn't saw it till the other day, so that one's really neat, this cart here. Uh, can you show us what it's like in there? Sure. So this one is the same thing. It's designed for security. So you guys on the job side, they need to leave the tools. They need to leave some of the wire. All they need to do is just get everything inside there and um, close it. And it has, it has the rod that goes through the boxes yep. inside. Still gonna hold it, and you can still do multiple pulls through the car without having to remove the boxes from it. Oh, okay, so you just and pull it again, yeah. Okay, very nice. And then um, this is kind of like the one that we have, where you take the poles, the the sizes that you need, and you put it together, right. and it's also a dolly. Yep. Um, and then briefly, you said you had these, which I just found out about this. I never knew you even had this, but do you want to explain that real quick? So on these ones, whenever you have multiple jobs, they will require the same type of uh, small uh, parts. Uh, we're talking about tape, uh, face plates, uh, jacks, uh, and uh, patch cords. Uh, you can send the order uh, for multiple, and we can set them all up, get them all marked, get them all together, and send it to you as a key for each uh, individual job. So gotcha. let's say you need 10, you need 20, or you need 200, we'll get them all ready for you. Gotcha. Now we can be like, hey, here's your kit. Take this, that door, install it, take this, and it has everything yep. you need ready everything to go. Everything you need in one pack. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up the facility here, right? Yep. A lot of good, interesting things to cover. Well, um, hopefully you learned a lot. And, and, and if, you, if you're interested in us or if you want to know any more, you can always visit our website at uh, smartwire.com. Um, we have multiple videos on how to use all the devices in here. Uh, probably better than I can explain it on this video. Perfect. We'll have uh, Randall put all the information in the description so that they can go in there and click on your website and check it all out and everything. Sounds good, yes. Um, all right, well, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Guardian Safe and Locks YouTube channel. Uh, we appreciate the support as always. Please hit the subscribe button. We appreciate the subscriptions. And uh, don't forget the uh, bell icon for notifications. And you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or on all the social media platforms. Juan, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us uh, here when we're uh, touring Windy City Wires facility.